Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools. On today's episode, we are actually installing Formica wall paneling on a vertical surface using contact adhesive spray and a router to cut it. If you want to learn the process, keep on watching. Let's get started. Now this project starts and finishes at this old sad wall. As you can see, it's had quite a few run-ins with a few doors since it's at a local restaurant. And just because I'm installing this at a restaurant doesn't mean that it's just for restaurants. This can be for any type of residential area as well. And just like most projects, the measurement portion is extremely vital to making sure that we have proper success on this project. It is quite the handful if we do not have that, so just keep that in mind. I take multiple width as well as multiple height locations just to ensure the fact that I have the proper measurement over the entire area. Now there's plenty of wall panelings that you can choose from, but this product is actually a Formica product that I picked up at a Home Depot, and I'll leave a link in the description box below on actually where to purchase it. The color itself is called out as black and steel with a matte finish, and there's a number of reasons why you would use this type of paneling. One, it's decorative and looks good. Two, it's easy to clean. And three, it's extremely durable compared to drywall. Sneak peek, if you want to wait till the end of the video, I do take a hammer to it, and let's just say it's interesting to see how much abuse this thing can take. Now Formica is an interesting thing to try and cut because it's a little squirrely and unwieldy if you can think about trying to actually prop it up on a table saw and try and cut it, it's not going to work out well. That's why I'm using a router. Yes, a router with this type of straight bit is a perfect way to cut this type of Formica product. Now this is a trimming router bit, which means you can actually glide the router bit all the way across the panel if it has some type of guide to be pressed against, or you can press the side of the router against some type of guide so it glides across in the right direction. I've tried both ways and I prefer this style because I'm able to see more as well as the router feels more secure. Now the one product you want to have on a hand with this type of project is 3M double sided sticky tape. Now this tape is extremely strong and doesn't leave any residue if you try and remove it. Now I apply this to just some piece of straight trim stock that I had laying around. Now it can be any type of trim piece or any type of material that's straight. Just again, note the straightness is important. Now as you can see, I did stick my six foot level underneath the Formica just because I wanted to make sure I had a bit of elevation when running my router across the Formica. I also applied a bit of painter's tape to the edge of which I was gonna be cutting just because I wanna ensure the fact that I have a nice clean crisp edge. And yes, I know it doesn't look like a crisp edge right there, but that's actually just the dust and debris that's sticking to the tape. Once I remove the tape, it looks like this, and as you can see, it is buttery smooth and quite perfect all the way down, and that's exactly what we want. Now the next step, of course, is to apply my measurements to the vertical side, and then cut that the exact same way that we cut the horizontal side. Now one item that I haven't noted as of yet is that you have to account for the distance from the side of the router to the router bit. You then have to take that measurement and subtract it from your overall width. Now in this case, I have a panel that needs to be 36 and a half inches. So the distance between that router bit to the side of the router is two inches. So that trim support is actually at 34 and a half inches. Does that make sense? If not, please let me know in the description, but I think it does. I mean, everyone loves math, right? Right. After we clean up the panel and remove the excess tape, it's time to actually tape off the surrounding area which we're going to be spraying our contact adhesive spray. But first, before we do that, you always want to make sure you dry fit the panel first to ensure that it's going to fit properly and there's not going to be any issues once you apply the adhesive because trust me, when you apply this adhesive, it ain't going anywhere. Now for this panel, we are using 3M High Strength 90 Contact Adhesive Spray. Now there's a number of different adhesive sprays that 3M makes, but personally, this is the strongest that I find at the stores, and I don't know if they make a stronger one, but this is by far the strongest that they have at your local Home Depot. Now you want to be generous with your contact adhesive spray at this point because you want to have proper adhesion over the entire surface. So I want to apply a full coat in one direction and then proceed to applying a second coat in the opposite direction. I also make sure I have good proper coverage on all the corners because if there's going to be a weak point in this entire thing, it's going to be the corners. 
I then do the exact same coverage process on the wall and then after remove the tape. Now the interesting thing about conduct adhesive spray is that you want to make sure that it dries for a couple minutes. An easy way to test this is if you take your fingers and you lightly press it against the surface, you shouldn't have any product adhering to your fingers. Now with large panels like this, you want to make sure you're starting it on one side or one corner and then working your way across. Now trick is, is that you want to apply dowels or in my case I have a level and I place that on one side so therefore that way I can ensure that I have proper adhesion on one side without having to worry about the entire thing sticking to the wall all at once. I use my hand at first and then I actually just take a paint roller and smooth out the entire surface. Now there are silicone rollers that are specifically designed to put quality pressure over the entire surface, but I don't have one of those and a paint roller works just fine in my opinion. Now inevitably somehow, some way, there's always a couple little conduit adhesive spray marks that found their way to the front of the panel somehow. I just apply a bit of goof off to a clean rag and remove the excess adhesive. That works quite well. As for excess adhesive on the wall, I find that goof off is a bit too harsh, so I then take some WD-40 and just spray it on the wall and remove it with a rag. Now that seems quite easy to remove with that solution as well. But guess what? After that's taken care of, you are done. The beauty about a product like this is that it's so versatile, whether it's being placed on walls, on countertops, and so forth, you're really able to apply it to a number of different surfaces. And the fact that it's so durable, it's beautiful, and it's easy cleanup makes a win-win win. And there you have it, episode number 69 of BOT fully completed. And I know this is a restaurant, but there's so many residential applications for this process. So hope you guys all enjoyed it and appreciated learning something from it. In any case, thank you for your time. Please like the video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Instagram feed as well as my newly developed website at byotools.me. You can learn how to support the channel from there. Also, I owe you a hammer video, yes. Let's actually find out how strong Formica really is. How about I do my best impression of the owl from the Tootsie Pop commercials? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we'll just stick with nine. Lucky number nine.